Hello everyone, uh, Stepan here. Uh, this will be the uh, introductory video to the Sicilian defense and I'm finally starting a series on the Sicilian after finishing uh, the French defense. And uh, the Sicilian defense is by far the most popular opening in chess today and it has been so for the last 20 or 30 years, I believe, ever since uh, it uh, overran uh, e5 as the most popular response to e4 to the king's pawn opening. And uh, during the last 20 or 30 years, the Sicilian has been, has been upgraded a uh, hundredfold and the theory has advanced so much that Nowadays, I don't believe there's a single grandmaster that knows all the all the theory in the Sicilian defense. Uh, there are uh, numerous numerous lines to cover and numerous variations. Uh, and in this video, I'm going to go uh, over each one of them briefly and just give you an overview of, of what can be played in the Sicilian defense for both sides. And I'm also going to give you the main ideas uh, for both sides, the main plans, traps, etc. And a video, a separate video is going to be made on each separate variation in great detail. So each of the variations which you can see listed on the right side of the screen uh, will be covered in detail, in detail in a separate video. And you can see uh, the variations listed in the description below uh, a bit more uh, uh, better, better written because I had uh, I don't have enough room on the screen to, to, to do that properly here. So check out the description below for more information. You can also find the timings for each variation and switch to, to one which you need the most or you want to see first. Okay, so let's begin. Uh, so after e4 uh, for white, uh, black chooses to play c5, the Sicilian defense, and once c5 is played, uh, this is the Sicilian, and it can't be, uh, you can't get out of the Sicilian after c5. Now what black is doing with c5, uh, he's trying to challenge the center uh, sort of indirectly. Playing e5 on move 1 is of course uh, following what white is doing symmetrically, and it is the most sensible move theoretically, because it opens up the bishop, it opens up the queen, and uh, it does uh, most work for the development of black's pieces. The move c5, on the other hand, uh, doesn't do any of that. Firstly, the move is only uh, helping to develop the queen. Uh, nothing is being done for king safety and king development and king kingside development. So black is going to have to work for that. Um, secondly, uh, black is challenging the center from the flank and uh, that means that black is most commonly going to have uh, the queen side to work on and white is going to have the king side to work on and white's attack is going to be concentrated on the king side, black's attack is going to be concentrated on the queen side. Now in practice what happens after the Sicilian, in most open Sicilian games which are the Nidorf and many other variations which are, which are the most popular ones, the white's d-pawn gets traded away for black's c-pawn on this square. And once that happens, if you imagined these two pawns not being on the board, you can see that black has traded his flank pawn for white's central pawn. Now even though all the pawns are worth one point at the start of the game, one could argue that central pawns have a, a higher value because one that has more central control, uh, which is most often achieved by pawns, has an advantage. So you could say that in any end game or late middle game, once the pieces get traded off, black is going to be better because he is going to have more central pawns. Because black is going to have his e pawn and his d pawn, and white is going to have his e pawn and his c pawn. So black has the central pawn majority in most cases. The other thing is that uh, once black has committed to playing c5, he's going to have to play several pawn moves uh, in the following 10 moves in the opening in order to solidify his position. So black is either playing e6, d6, a6 or g6 in some variations, a combination of these moves, while at the same time white isn't making that many pawn moves, white is developing pieces. So uh, the basic idea of the Sicilian for white 
is to get as much initiative going as possible out of the opening because white is always going to have a lead in development, greater initiative and more attacking chances at the start. So if white is able to capitalize on his advantage uh, in the opening, then, then white is going to be better. If black manages to survive the opening, if black plays properly and gets to trade off some pieces and get, gets, gets into an endgame, black is going to be better because of his positional advantage of the central pawn majority. So this is the basic idea of the opening in theory. Now, uh, I'm going to be covering several key moves, all the key moves that is. Firstly, the first move which we are going to look at for white is knight to f3, which is by far the most popular move. Secondly, we are going to go over knight to c3, which leads to closed Sicilian positions. We are going to look at c3, which is the c3 Sicilian or the Alapin Sicilian. We are going to look at f4 which is the McDonald attack, a very aggressive way for white to play, similar to the Grand Prix attack. And we're going to look at d4, the smith Mora gambit. So, uh, since knight to f3 on move 2 is, is the most common move, let's go over the, over the alternatives first. Once again, a separate video is going to be made on each individual variation, and you can find the variations listed in the description below with the timing to each one in the video, so you can skip to them if you wish to do so. So, knight to f3 will be covered last. Let's go over knight to c3 first. Knight to c3 is called the closed Sicilian uh, because white, in many cases, doesn't plan to play d4. Once d4 is played, that's the open Sicilian, and that's most commonly played after two knight to f3. Now, uh, to knight to c3, black basically has one good move, and that's knight to c6. Uh, he could also play e6 or d6, uh, but knight to c6 is considered most solid, and this is the traditional closed Sicilian. Now to this, uh, white has several moves. Uh, firstly, the closed Sicilian begins after g3, the fianchetto variation of the closed Sicilian, and this is the most sensible way for white to play. Now white is playing g3, we have g6, bishop g2, bishop g7, d3, d6, a fairly symmetrical position in which after bishop e3, rook to b8, black is, as I said, planning to have an attack on the queen side, white is going to going to do the same on the king side, often playing the move f4 knight to f3, or castling and developing the knight to f3. So this position, if you are uh, comfortable in the king's Indian attack setups and ready opening, this is quite similar to that. And the closed Sicilian is much different to the normal open Sicilian lines, such as the uh, Shveshnikov or the or the Nider for the Scheveningen. So, uh, g3 is the most sensible move. After uh, knight to c6, the second most common move is bishop to b5. And this move is trying to relinquish black of his central control because of the knight here. Now, if white manages to trade the light squared bishop for this knight, then after the moves d3, f4, knight to f3 and castles, white is going to have a better minor piece because this bishop needs to get out of the pawn chain and gets traded off because it's only a nuisance in white's position. So to this, uh, black will most commonly reply with, we reply with knight to d4, bishop to c4 saving the bishop, e6, knight g to e2, knight f6, castles, a6, d3, b5. Uh, once again, black is attacking on the queen side, white is planning an attack on the king side. This bishop is not trapped, of course, after bishop to b3, knight takes b3, a takes b3, bishop to b7. White has traded his worst piece on the board, even though black has the bishop pair, one could argue that the bishop on b7 isn't as useful because the light squares are blocked, and white is going to play f4 and uh, queen to uh, queen to e1, queen to h4, and have an attack on the king side. So that's the basic plan. Now the third most common move after after knight to c6 is a slightly more aggressive variation of this, and that's the move f4. This is the Grand Prix attack. Now f4 is immediately planning to play knight to f3, bishop here once again, sometimes in some positions bishop to e2 and d3 without trading of the bishop, because this bishop could be useful in defense, but if you manage to trade it for the c6 knight that will benefit white more. But in the Grand Prix that's not usually what happens. Now after f4, g6, knight f3, bishop g7, bishop to b5, knight d4, castles, uh, knight takes b5, knight takes b5, d5. This is, let's say, the starting position. Once again, I'm going to go into much more detail in a separate video about the Grand Prix. This is just to give you an idea of what the opening is. 
you can see once again that white is planning a kingside attack black is yet to develop white has a lead in, in development of course and both sides have something to play for but the grand prix is perhaps the most aggressive way for for white to play okay so after e4 c5 we just went over knight to c3 the close sicilian the move c3 is the alapin sicilian or the c3 sicilian in which white is simply reinforcing the move d4 with the c3 pawn and this is a slower way to play the sicilian black is already considered to have equalized in this position but the engine analysis in the opening isn't really something you should trust here in this position black has two moves black can either play knight to f6 or black can play d5 now after knight to f6 e5 of course chasing the knight away you might think this, that this resembles the aliochin a bit and it does knight to d5 d4 c takes d4 knight to knight to f3 knight to c6 cd4 d6 this is the the starting position of the alapin uh, sicilian and let's say bishop to c4 which is the most common move uh, white of course has a lot more central control but it can be disrupted uh, easily with a move such as d takes e and both sides have something to play for but if your opponent is not prepared for this uh, this uh, in its own right the move c3 could be a great surprise weapon to inexperienced sicilian players now knight to b6 should be played bishop to b5 d takes c5 knight takes c5 bishop to d7 knight takes d7 queen takes d7 once again you can see uh, that uh, the position is fairly imbalanced but both sides have something white has the bishop pair uh, and white has the isolated pawn which black can attack easily now in this position uh, it's already not that easy to defend the pawn you have to play a move such as bishop to e3 and you can see that white legs development in this position as well but once again a fairly balanced position in which both sides have something to play for after c3 uh, if black doesn't play knight to f6 he can play d5 this is a more aggressive way to face the c3 sicilian here white is best advised to take so e takes d5 queen takes d5 d4 knight f6 knight to f3 bishop g4 bishop e2 e6 this is the starting position and this is called the barman attack and it's a fun variation to play with both sides and especially in blitz chess now as in all variations this is equal out of the opening and if you know the theory uh, you will have an advantage generally over your opponent once again it will be covered in a separate video okay let's go back after e5 c5 uh, two very aggressive ways to play are the mcdonald attack with f4 neglecting any opening uh, or development and uh, just going straight for the attack and the black is best advised to play d5 gaining central control e takes d5 knight to f6 not taking with the queen because knight to c3 gains the tempo bishop b5 check bishop d7 bishop takes queen takes this is the starting position you can see that white has disrupted his uh, development slightly uh, black has two to one uh, lead uh, i'm sorry three to two lead in development and white doesn't have a single piece developed but white is going to have a lot of attacking chances so as a surprise weapon and especially in blitz chess uh, playing the move f4 is a great weapon okay one more c5 uh, after uh, c5 white white could also go for the smith mora gambit and uh, the smith mora gambit is the move d4 and this is considered to be one of the most aggressive ways for white to play and it's a very good way uh, theoretically justified and even the engines think it's a good move now of course the most challenging way for black to play is to take the pawn so c takes d4 c3 it's a full pawn sacrifice so black has to take d takes c3 uh, knight takes c3 knight to c6 knight to f3 e6 bishop c4 and once again uh, you can see uh, even though white has given up a pawn uh, white has three pieces developed black has only one and black has to play moves such as a6 to prevent the knight coming to b5 and after white castles i'm sure uh, that this lead in development more than compensates for one pawn and uh, if you are an attacking player if you like attacking chess then try the smith mora gambit it's a very fun variation to play uh, so knight g to e7 should be played bishop g5 f6 uh, and you can already see that with a move such as f6 black has to compromise in the position and weaken his king side but if you don't play f6 then it's really hard to develop playing moves such as g6 bishop to g7 weakens the the dark squares permanently and black is going to be in a lot of trouble so if black doesn't know what he's doing in the smith mora then white will have a great time and an easy time winning despite the loss of a pawn 
Okay, uh, so these were the sidelines, you can say, uh, after the move C5. Firstly, knight to C3, the close Sicilian, C3, the Aleppo in Sicilian, F3, uh, the McDonald attack, D4, the Smith Mora Gambit. Now let's go back to the basics. E4, C5, knight to F3, uh, the main line Sicilian going into the open Sicilian and... Uh, this is where the theory branches out. Now we are going to uh, look at uh, five, uh, six responses by black. Uh, we are going to go over d6 on move to knight to c6, e6, g6, a6, and knight to f6. Now, firstly, the most common move d6. Uh, d6 is uh, probably uh, the most often played move in the Sicilian and after d6 uh, the line is pretty much forced d4 will be played by white c takes d4 now white could capture with the queen here I'm going to cover that in a separate video but much, much more often white captures with the knight so knight takes d4 knight to f6 knight to c3 let's go over one sideline first a variation which I play against the Sicilian is the Prince variation, which is the move f3 instead of knight to c3. Now, uh, in this variation you are basically uh, uh, waiting with the move knight to c3 and you have to defend d4, so you do it with the pawn in order to be able to play c4 and just then play knight to c3. But this is very risky for, uh, for white. And if black knows what he is doing, then uh, white is going to be in a lot of trouble. Now, firstly, if uh, black goes for lines such as a6, trying to get into the Nidorf, then white is simply better with uh, c4 and black, black has a strategically losing game after a6 c4 so a6 should never be played if you if white plays f3 against you instead of a knight to c3 on move 5 then you have to try to punish that and the way to punish that is the move is with the move e5 so e5 knight to b3 d5 should should be played immediately because if black achieves d5 in the sicilian that means that uh, he's okay so if you if you can play d5 and go unpunished then you should always do that Bishop to g5 here by white pinning the knight, d4, c3 challenging the center, knight to c6, bishop to b5 pinning the knight, h6, bishop takes, queen takes, cd4, bishop b4 check to make sure you can recapture the pawn because your knight is pinned, so knight 1 to d2, e takes d4, a3, bishop d6, and in this position black has an advantage obviously black has a passed pawn on on d4 even though the material is equal i i think black's bishop pair and the passed pawn give him a lot of attacking chances so this is the best way to punish the move f3 and if white knows what he is doing then very often white is going to be okay from here and obviously i play the move f3 so i'm prepared for this exact position and i have analyzed it 10 moves in depth from here and white can be okay but black has more than equalized so if you if your opponent plays the move f3 or move 5 remember that you have to play e5 knight b3 and then d5 immediately gaining central control but let's go back after knight to f6 by far the most common move is knight to c3 after knight to c3 uh, this is where uh, the game uh, branches out and uh, after knight to c3 uh, there are basically uh, I think five major variations which which branch out uh, from here uh, and we are going to go over all of them firstly that's a6 uh, a6 is the Nidorf and uh, sorry uh, the Nidorf is, go is going to be covered in two videos maybe even in three videos I'm just going to give you uh, several moves which white can play here uh, I think the most common move still is bishop to g5 uh, I think that's the most solid variation. This is the main line Nidorf. Uh, white could also play bishop to c4, bishop to e2, bishop to d3, h3, or bishop to e3. And all of these variations have a separate name. All of these variations have been so heavily analyzed than the top grandmasters, namely Maxim Bashir Legrave, who is the best Nidorf player in the world, probably knows all of them and many more in great depth. So I'm going to try to cover them properly in separate videos. I'm not even going to go into any theory in this video. So that would be the Nidorf. After knight to c3, so a6 is the most common move in the knight of g6 is the dragon variation, uh, the second most popular variation of the Sicilian, uh, probably named the dragon because this uh, structure resembles a dragon for some reason, I'm not sure. 
And here uh, white once again has several uh, several options. We are going to go over to the dragon in detail. But here I'm just going to show you the most common lines. Bishop to e3, knight to c6, f3. Uh, white is uh, defending the d4 pawn with f3. And white is going to castle queenside. Black is going to castle kingside. And white is going to attack uh, via the h file. And black is going to do the same via, via the c file. So h5. Uh, queen d2, knight takes d4, bishop takes d4, bishop h6. Uh, this is just one example of how the game could go, how the games uh, games could go. But once again, we are going to go in detail in a separate video. So um, after knight to c3, uh, a6 is the knight of, g6 is the dragon, knight to c6 is a very uh, nice move. This is the classical Sicilian. And after knight to c6, uh, once again, I'm going to show you only one line. So bishop to g5, uh, that's the main line. In the classical Sicilian, e6, queen to d2, bishop to e7, castles queen side, castles king side, f4. This is a very fun variation to play. And I think that uh, if you know the theory in this line then uh, with white, then black is in trouble because... Even though the engines would say it's equal, I think white has a lot more attacking chances. And if you manage to catch black off guard, then you could easily have a, a, a nice win. So after knight to c3, uh, a6 is the knight of, g6 is the dragon, knight to c6 is the classical. And e6 is probably the second most common move. This is the Chevening and Sicilian. And this has been uh, so popular during the 80s and the 90s. I think this was the most popular variation of the Sicilian. Uh, to e6, to the Scheveningen, uh, white has four moves and uh, white has a fairly aggressive repertoire to choose from. Firstly, the most aggressive move is g4. Uh, and the most fun move, of course. To this, black needs to respond with h6 and then h4. You can see what's coming. After e6, if white wants to be uh, more passive, then he could go uh, bishop to e2 and after bishop e7 castles. Or he could go after e6, bishop to e3, a6, f3, and once again planning to castle queenside and uh, playing a hybrid in between a, a Nidorf and a dragon and uh, a Shevening and something strange, but this is a good setup for white. And uh, another move in the Scheveningen that white could go for is the move f4. And f4 is uh, once again a very aggressive move. So after a6, queen to f3, uh, white is most commonly going to castle kingside still, but he's going to have a lot of pressure in the center and along the f file. So that's the Scheveningen uh, variation of the Sicilian. Now, uh, let's go back. Uh, on move 2, after knight to f3, so if white plays d6, uh, if black plays d6 on move 2, then we can enter the prince variation, the knight of variation, uh, the dragon variation, the classical variation, or the Scheveningen variation. Now, let's go over some other moves. After knight to f3, uh, of course, black doesn't have to play knight to... Uh, white, uh, black doesn't have to play d6. If he chooses knight to c6, uh, that's the second most common move. And this is called the old Sicilian. And... Uh, Plenty of interesting variations can branch out from this move. Now, uh, firstly, uh, white could either go for d4, d4, so cd4, knight d4, this is the most common line, or white could go for the move bishop to b5, and this is the second most common variation. This is the Nezmedino of Rosolima attack in the Sicilian, and this is once again going to be covered in a separate video because there's, uh, there's a whole separate th theoretical book on just on this line. But let's go over the main line. So knight c6, d4, cd4, knight d4. Now, uh, black once again gets to choose uh, from three moves. Uh, knight to f6 is the most common line. And the knight to f6 is the open Sicilian, the open uh, old Sicilian. So knight to c3, e5 should be played here uh, by, by black. Once again, chasing the knight away and trying to get some initiative. Now, the most common move is knight d to b5 d6 should be played and this now transposes to many similar variations but once again uh, black has a plan of trying to castle here white has to attack while he has time and the black is putting a lot of pressure on the d6 pawn obviously uh, black has a weakness though on the d5 square so uh, a, a, an imbalanced balanced position uh, so okay so after cd4 
Knight to d4, we just went over knight to f6. Black could also go for g6, which is a very fun uh, idea to play, and this is called the Accelerated Dragon. And uh, I have played uh, two or three games against the Accelerated Dragon in the last month, so you can check them out on the channel if you'd like. And this is the setup I play and the main line and the most common setup against the Accelerated Dragon. So why should I seize the moment and play c4? Uh, this is called the Morozzi bind against the against the accelerated dragon, and this is um, the most problematic way for white to play uh, for black to face white's position. And uh, black is uh, lacking control in the center. You can see that uh, black is never pretty much able to play the move d5, which is his main idea. And black is going to be content uh, with some piece activity along the flanks and along the diagonals. So bishop g7. Bishop e3, knight to f6, knight to c3, castles, bishop e2, d6, castles. Uh, here uh, I usually go for uh, kingside castling. I think this is much more solid because uh, you're going to have some uh, plans of putting something on the d5 square, which is uh, black's main weakness. If black at any point plays the move e5, then this is a permanent weakness. And uh, you can see uh, both visually and practically that in this position, white has a lot more chances. Now, of course, the position is not lost for black. Uh, there are a lot of ideas for black. And this is, this is what has been uh, analyzed for the last 50 years probably to find something for black and there are some variations in which black could have uh, very dangerous attacking ideas. Now bishop d7 should be played here, queen d2, knight takes d4, bishop d4, uh, bishop to c6. This is just one variation. Once again both sides have the bishop pair, white has a lot more control in the center, he is pre preventing the move d5, but black isn't lost, black has some chances. But I think that uh, white is better in this line. Still, uh, you can't ever tell uh, accelerated dragon players that they are worse uh, in the opening, which um, is basically true theoretically. Okay, uh, so after knight to c6, uh, d4, uh, c takes d4, knight takes d4, we just went over knight to f6, which is the classical, g6, which is the accelerated dragon, and now we are going to go over e5. E5 is a great move. This is the elemental variation of the, of the Sicilian defense. And uh, this move uh, avoids the common problems that black has in, in some other variations branching, branching out from knight to c6. And it immediately challenges white's central control and chases the knight away. So knight to b5 is the best move. You have to play d6, which is now uh, controlling uh, controlling the square d6 indirectly because you, if you allow knight to d6 check, bishop takes, queen takes, then uh, then white is simply better. Uh, so d6, d6, knight one to c3, a6 chasing the knight away, knight to a3, b5, and of course you are now developing with tempo. One of the knights has to move, so knight to d5, knight g to e7, c4, uh, and black is going to fianchetto his bishop. Black is going to either capture the knight on d5 or firstly fianchetto and place his knight on d4. You can see that both sides have weaknesses in the position. And I would say that the Levantal uh, Sicilian is probably the best way for, for black to play, much better than the Accelerated Dragon. I think this could cause white a lot of trouble if he doesn't know the theory. And the best thing is that most players with white don't know that much theory in this line. And um, I have actually prepared this for one of my opponents um, I played a month ago, who ended up playing G6, the Accelerated Dragon, but I was preparing this line for white because I didn't really know, him, know it and I, and I was expecting him to play the Levantal variation. Okay, uh, so this was the move knight to c6. Uh, okay, now let's go over e6. Uh, this move, uh, the French variation of the Sicilian, is the third most common response for, for black. Now, first let me go over what I play against this. And I play the move c4. And this is the Kramnik variation introduced by Vladimir Kramnik. And here we are trying to set up the Morozzi bind immediately from the start of the opening. And black will play knight to c6, you are going to play knight to c3. Knight f6, bishop e2, d5, e takes d5, e takes d5, d4. And this now resembles a queen pawn opening, but uh, after c4, knight to c6, you can go for d4 immediately. And this is what I play. So after pawn takes, knight takes, uh, 
I don't know what black should play. The most common move is knight to f6, and here you play knight to c3. Bishop here, uh, and you can take here. And after he takes, you play this. Uh, so defending your pawn, and if black decides to, to take here, then you're going to capture here, and your e4 pawn is going to be defended. So this is a position I play. Still, if you go for the Kramnik variation of the Sicilian, I would advise you that after knight to c6 you play knight to c3 because it is the best way for white to play. And you are basically going out of uh, Sicilian theory after this and if you looked at this position would you ever guess that this was the Sicilian defense? I, this resembles a semi tarash or some queen's pawn opening. So it might be a fun way, uh, a fun variation to play. But of course after e6 the main line is d4 c takes d4 knight takes d4 and of course uh, if you want to have the biggest advantage as white that's what you should play now we are going to go over three variations the paulson variation the khan variation and the normal french variation of the sicilian which branches out into the four knights variation and into the pin variation now firstly the paulson variation is the move knight to c6 black gets to choose these variations after knight to c6, knight to c3 should be played, and you get to use your open c file, semi open c file, immediately with the move queen to c7. After queen to c7, white should play bishop to e3 and a6, and the position goes on. Uh, you have prevented the knights coming into b5. You're going to be castling kingside. Uh, you are not worried about the move e5 if you play knight to f6. You're going to play either bishop to e7 or bishop to b4 and castle kingside. So this is the power set. After knight takes d4, the move a6 is the Khan variation, and this might surprise your opponents. Uh, I believe this is a great surprise weapon for many Sicilian players, because players with white, once again, aren't very used to this line. Uh, white should play bishop to d3. Uh, knight to f6 is the best move for black. Castles, queen c7, queen to e2, d6, c4, g6, knight c3, bishop g7, rook to d1, and castles. This is the starting position of the Khan. Now this is what happens if white plays perfectly uh, and white is supposed to have a slight edge here, close to plus one, but in practice it really isn't so. The engines like white here because he has the Morozzi bind set up and a lot more space in the center. But in practice uh, black would have a great game and once again uh, you can't expect uh, players with white to play perfectly for 11 moves, they might go wrong somewhere. Okay, uh, so this was uh, the Khan variation. After knight takes d4, there's another line which you should know, which is knight to f6, continuing the classical French variation of the Sicilian. And now, after uh, white plays knight to c3, you can either play knight to c6, which is the four knights variation of the Sicilian. And uh, after this, uh, white is going to be playing knight d to b5, trying to get into the d6 square. So once again, you have to play d6, prevent that. Bishop f4, e5. Uh, bishop to g5, a6, you keep chasing away white's pieces, and after knight to a3, b5, I love black's position here, and I believe that uh, the four knights variation is a great way for black to play, because you are you do have a weakness on d5, uh, but you're going to fianchetto your bishop and reinforce that square, and uh, in some positions you are even, even threatening uh, a lot of uh, space gain on the on the queen side and you can manage that easily and you could have a, a, a comfortable minority attack along the along the queen side as well so after knight to f6 uh, the continuing the french uh, variation of the sicilian knight to c3 you don't have to go for knight to c6 the four knights you can play bishop to b4 instead and this is the pin variation and I believe that this is the most uh, aggressive way for, for black to play if he wants a theoretical advantage. Because in this line, if white ever goes wrong, if white ever makes a, makes a mistake, then black is simply better. Now let me show you what white has to play. Uh, even though it might seem counterintuitive, reinforcing the attack on c3, white should play e5 and you play knight to d5. Bishop to d2, you have to you have to play this, and after knight takes a3, b takes a3, bishop to e7. Uh, even though the engines would, will tell you that white has an edge, uh, I think practically speaking that black is uh, just better. Firstly, this pawn is over overextended. For now, it does a lot of useful things. It prevents the pieces from de developing normally, and it controls d6 and f6. But it, it is also a huge weakness, along with the double pawns on the c-file and the isolated a2 pawn. 
So if black manages to survive the opening, uh, he will be better. Here, the most aggressive move for white is queen to g4 and black should castle. Now, of course, visually, it's obvious straight away that uh, black is going to give up the exchange. Uh, but uh, don't despair. <laughs> There's a way out and I'm going to cover this in a separate video. I think this is a great way to play despite the fact that you are losing an exchange early on. So we are going to go over that uh, in a separate line, in a separate video. Okay, uh, let's go back. So we have just covered, uh, after knight to f3, we have covered uh, the move d6, the move knight to c6 and the move e6. Now we are going to go over g6, the hyper accelerated dragon. This, I believe, isn't uh, that favorable for black. I think that uh, there are more sensible ways for black to play, but a video is going to be made on this line as well. And of course, if black knows what he's doing and if white is unprepared, then the accelerated dragon could be very dangerous. Firstly, white should play d4, and after cd4, knight d4, knight to c6, white should play c4, once again uh, treating the hyper-accelerated dragon the same way he treated the accelerated dragon. So after bishop to g7, white is simply going to play bishop to e3, knight to c3, bishop to e2, queen to d2, castle kingside. This is your setup, whatever black does. And uh, if you follow these moves, you basically can't go wrong. Uh, so just remember to develop your bishop to e3, develop your, develop your knight to c3, the light squared bishop goes to e2, the queen goes to d2, you're going to castle kingside and that's it. You will have a safe position, whatever black decides to do. So that's the hyper accelerated dragon. Now let's go over the O'Kelly variation, the move a6 on move 2. So after knight to f3, black could play a6 and uh, don't think that this enters the Nidorf because it doesn't. This, is, this isn't even similar to the Nidorf. Uh, and after a6, white's best move, since black has wasted time on the move a6, is to play c3, preparing the move d4. So uh, for black, uh, you should immediately, immediately strike in the center yourself with the move d5. So d5 is your best move and the only way to justify a6. So e takes d5, queen takes d5, d4. Because you, you were able to play queen takes d5 because white now couldn't have played knight to c3, of course. But after d4, uh, even though the position is equal, I think that white has an edge and white has a comfortable position and the lead in development. And of course, the queen is misplaced on d5. So if you are white and black plays a6 on move 2 against the, against the Sicilian with knight to f3, don't play anything similar to the Nidorf as if you, would, you were playing against the Nidorf, play c3 and you will get this position in which white has an edge. Okay, and the last line we are going to cover in the knight f3 Sicilian is the move knight to f6. Now, if you haven't seen this, it, it might seem strange, but it's actually a fun way to play for black. This is the, the Nimcovic variation of the Sicilian, and if uh, Nimcovic invented it, it can't be bad, can it? So, e5, uh, treat it like you would treat an Alyok in defense, knight d5, knight to c3, e6, and black is uh, accepting double pawns. So knight takes d5, e takes d5, d4, knight to c6, d takes c5, uh, bishop takes c5, queen takes d5, queen to b6. This is the starting position. Now once again, uh, you can see uh, that the position is imbalanced, but both sides have advantages and disadvantages which justify the moves that were played. Firstly, black has a strong battery on the f2 pawn that's uh, clearly visible. Secondly, Black has a weak isolated d-pawn and white has a strong e-pawn, uh, which is defended by the knight and by the queen. So both sides have great attacking chances and both sides have problems in their own camps, in their own defenses. If I had to choose a side here, I'd probably take black on first glance, but uh, uh, you will see in the video I make that white is actually slightly better here. So the Nimzovich defense is a great surprise weapon, but perhaps not the most sensible way to attack the King's Pawn opening if you go for the Sicilian. But it's a fun opening to know as a sideline. Uh, okay, uh, I hope you didn't go mad after all this rant about all the variations of the Sicilian. I tried to at least tell you which uh, variations exist. I tried to tell you which videos which videos I'm going to make uh, 
once again uh, a separate video in which I'm going into much more depth uh, about each separate variation will be made throughout the next I would say uh, 30 days maybe 40 days so I'm going to make one video each three or four days and I'm going to cover uh, every single single line uh, if I have forgotten something please don't hesitate to say so in the comments below I would also appreciate any help, feedback or suggestions about the series too and uh, thanks for watching. Uh, stay tuned for more chess and see you very soon with the Accelerated Dragon that's going to be the, the first video. Thanks very much. Bye.